We have all seen them, cameras on street corners, parking lots at public parks, even in elevators. And now questions about cameras at our home. Amazon, which owns at-home camera company Ring, is now admitting to handing over camera footage to police without a warrant or consent from the Ring's owner. The tech giant defended its use by law enforcement on Wednesday by pointing out that police can only get access to a camera owner's footage with their express permission or a court order. But after recent questioning, Amazon double-backed, now saying that it provided police with user recordings 11 times this year without permission or a warrant. Chadwick Moore, a columnist and contributing editor with The Spectator, uh, expresses outrage right here on News Nation earlier this week on On Balance. It's hard to imagine what the situation was that you would need access to someone's doorbell camera the law enforcement would, that would stop imminent violence and how long it would take to get that permission and then for that violence to be stopped. I, I don't understand. It makes no sense. Questions remain on how much control big tech companies have over our privacy and does this surveillance actually catch any criminals? Uh, Lawrence Capello, assistant professor of U.S. legal and constitutional history at the University of Alabama and author of None of Your Damn Business, what a great title, uh, joins me now. Um, Lawrence, so it, it is kind of strange. We buy these ring cameras and like pretty much everybody has them now, but Amazon gives the video out from the cameras that we bought I, I, is that legal? Um, it's not great. Look, surveillance is a phenomenal tool for law enforcement and for criminal investigations. Thousands of violent criminals have been brought to justice thanks to surveillance-based evidence, stuff from ring cameras. I'm talking people who've done really, truly horrific things, and it's good that they're off the street. But that said, the right to privacy, that's an essential part of what it means to live in a free society. So that means that police surveillance has to come with certain guardrails. So this move with Amazon, just handing over someone's private ring footage is really concerning. And there's a really good argument to be made that it crosses the line. The problem isn't so much that police got access to this footage. The problem is that they got it without needing a warrant or a court order. Amazon just handed it over without any kind of judicial oversight and without getting the owner's consent. Look, one of the cool things about the Fourth Amendment and being in America is that when law enforcement wants to kind of conduct a search that maybe is a little bit weird or out of bounds or unreasonable, the Constitution says that you should get a warrant first. If you want to look at someone and see their footage, cool, that's fine. Just go get a judge, have a legal expert look at it, make sure everything's fine and sign off. It's kind of a fundamental aspect of what it means to live in a free society. And otherwise, you're just taking people's word for it. And that becomes a really slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna. That's exactly what I was gonna say. It seems like a slippery slope. Uh, would you get a ring camera? Would you be nervous about it? Yeah, I have video surveillance in my house, but it's something that I take some certain measures to make sure other people aren't able to see without my consent. Yeah, well, that's what I was gonna say. You can have surveillance cameras, uh, but they don't have to be hooked up through Ring to Amazon's cloud where they they have your video. I promised our producer Ryan I would ask you because I don't know what he's doing in his apartment, but he's very, very concerned that his Alexa could be listening to everything he's doing and that someone could get a hold of those recordings too. Is that also a concern? I mean, would you have an Alexa? Yeah, uh, no, I wouldn't have Alexa. I mean, yeah, there's the great irony in that, you know, you read 1984 and it's about the government spying on everyone. At the end of the day, we're the ones who bought the cameras and the microphones ourselves, right? But look, any question about this stuff is always gonna come back to balance. One of the big things about privacy in the 21st century, I'm a history professor. I study the history of surveillance and privacy. In the 20th century, the big fights for privacy advocates were about stopping people from collecting information. That fight is lost. When people say privacy dead, privacy is dead, that's what they're talking about. But what you need to realize is just because your information has been collected, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to exercise control over it. The battleground for privacy advocates in the 21st century is about what people can do after information has been collected. So you should be able to enjoy the many conveniences that come with surveillance tech, that comes with Alexa. The question today is about how do we strike a balance between enjoying those conveniences while also being able to protect our privacy. And this is something that a lot of advanced democracies have able, been able to do. One of the problems with the United States is we have some of the weakest protect, privacy protections of all of the advanced democracies, which is weird because you know we're into individual liberty, we're into personal autonomy, but yeah. on this, we're really, it's something we're really slacking on and it's something we really need to keep our eyes open about.
Yeah, it's fascinating, also frightening to think about. Uh, Lawrence Capello, thanks for coming on tonight. We appreciate it.